Welcome to the HJ Talks About Abuse podcast. In this podcast, we talk about sexual abuse cases in the hope it will assist listeners in openly discussing topics which have been ignored for too long. This podcast is brought to you by the abuse team at Hugh James. We are lawyers, so we do tend to speak about the legal aspects of abuse cases, but we aren't too shy to speak up about the broader issues faced by survivors too. Hello podcast listeners, I'm Alan Collins and I'm joined today by my colleague Sam Barker. Thanks Sam. In this podcast we often try to keep up with news and in particular developments in online sexual exploitations so that our listeners are aware of what's out there in the ever-changing technological world and today I'm going to be talking to Sam about catfishing. 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 Yeah. And catfishing to Luddites like me doesn't Good word. Mean I like Luddite. Pussycats <laughs> going fishing. Um, so can you tell us, please, Sam, in all seriousness, what catfishing actually is? Mm. Yeah, no problem, Alan. I guess catfishing is something that I heard of years ago when I saw this, uh, I saw an American documentary or at least alleged documentary. I don't know if it was actually staged, but who knows? But aside from the, the producers, of course, but I saw that years ago. And um, and since then, you know, when I first saw it, it was kind of like something that was somewhat funny, I guess. It was people pretending to be somebody else online. And um, over the years, this has morphed into another way that criminals can, you know, exploit one of ever many means online to exploit people and commit fraud, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll talk about that today. And so we're going to be talking about it in the context of people using social, social media identities in order to sexually abuse. Yeah, absolutely. So catfishing is a type of deceptive activity where a person creates an identity on a social network, social networking platform, and then basically that, that identity is fake and they use it to specifically target someone for deception. So thinking aloud so we can put all of this in context. So it's a bit like someone going dating online, they're aged, I don't know, 50, and they make out they're 35. So that's a sort of deception, isn't it? A sort of deception, but then catfishing goes even further, and it's it's not lying about your age if you're if you're just the person, you know, you're not lying about your identity. Catfishing is creating a, an entirely false identity online and kind of luring somebody in to so think you are that person. So haven't we yeah. seen cases where... People have got into serious trouble and gone to prison, for example, a male making out that he's a female in order to capture males interested in females and vice versa. Yeah. The, yeah. Again, so it's that kind of use of the internet that certain criminals use to enable their criminal behavior. And look, I guess that a good way to explain this is actually the plot of that documentary, Catfish. Have you, have you seen that movie, Alan? Have you seen that documentary? No. As I said, I'm a bit of a... I'm behind the times on some of this. So t- tell us all about Catfish. Yeah, no problem. So Catfish follows the uh, the story of a young man named Nev as he builds a romantic relationship with a woman called Megan on Facebook. The relationship started when Megan's young sister, Abby, sent um, Nev a painting, which showed, you know, she was kind of a child prodigy artist. And this led to Nev getting in contact with the family, which was uh, included the young sister, the mother, the father, and the soon-to-be girlfriend, the attractive older sister, Megan. So their relationship blossoms online. This is obviously probably before the times where you could do FaceTime and all of that and videos online. So it was more through a messaging service and sending photos, etc. Megan was sending to Nev artwork and um, songs, and he became suspicious when he saw that the um, the songs were lifted off YouTube. So he goes to meet, he goes to, you know, surprise the family at the house and the door is answered by a person purporting to be the mother, whose name is Angela. Angela constructs a series of lies about her health and the family situation to avoid Nev meeting the remaining members of the family. And then in the end, probably unsurprisingly, if you're listening to this podcast, because you kind of figure out what's going to happen, it transpires that Angela is playing all of the characters in this fake Facebook life. So she is not only the girlfriend, Megan, she used photos of a model 
from another state to um, to say that was her. She was also playing the character of the father and the younger sister, the child prodigy artist. And over the course of nine months, there were over 1,500 messages exchanged and it turns out it was all this one person pretending to be a whole array of people. So, well, quite clever, but also quite sinister, I guess. Yeah, I, I think in, the, in that case, it show, that in, in that matter, it was more, you know, obviously displays a lot of psychological difficulties this person who is purporting to be an entire family of people would possess. Going off on a tangent, have you ever seen that famous film, Kind Hearts and Coronets? Kind Hearts and Coronets, no. No, um, Alec Guinness, very famous British actor. Yeah, yeah, course, no, Alex Guinness. Yeah. You know, Bridge Over the River Choir and all of that. He, in Kind Heart and Coronets, played the vast majority of the fictitious people in, in the film. So anyway, so anyway, that's, did that was that uh, did did any- in more innocent times? This was all innocent stuff. He he played the role of all these various characters in, in the film who who all get bumped off by, by one means or another. So um, yeah, it sounds like Eddie Murphy lifted that in the Nutty Professor. Did you ever see that? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so it's a real old black and white film from the late nineteen forties. A they show it occasionally. It's a very good film. Yeah. Anyway, and um, and uh, it's a very good film. Anyway, that's uh, more innocent times, so to speak. Anyway, so getting back to <laughs> less the, complicated yeah, times. Yeah, 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 less complicated times. <laughs> I think in many ways. Anyway, let's get back to catfishing. So we've seen, haven't we, where these terrible cases where children have been groomed and enticed over social media by adult sex offenders um, masquerading as fellow teenagers. So you can see how utterly dangerous the social media can can be when it's yeah. used in this way. And and that's what's happened with this case in Northern Ireland. So Alex Alexander McCartney was charged with possession, making and distributing indecent in- images of children as well as sexual activity with a child and intimidation to commit sexual activity with a child. And the prosecutor said that, or estimated, that he had more than 300 alleged victims who he'd contacted on social media using this catfishing ruse. And is the case on, Gary? Yeah. So um, so we better make the point, haven't we, that the defendant, Mr McCartney, presumably is denying matters if the case is on, Gary. Yeah, this is simply a, from a news article reporting on, you know, basically how the case is progressing. Of course, there's no finding of guilt as yet. So he could presumably, for we know, be entirely innocent of the allegations. But the case, I guess, demonstrates um, the sort of cases that are coming to the attention of the, of the police and the courts. Yeah, it does. And look, this this shows, I think, uh, you know, what, what is a real threat in social media, that one often doesn't know who is on the other end of the platform you're communicating with. Oh, well, I guess you're communicating through. You know, you, you don't know who you're talking terrible to. Terrible cases, hasn't happened there, which get reported where children, teenagers in particular, of course, youngsters in their sort of mid to late teens, have been the victims of this kind of behaviour, and it's had dreadful consequences for them. You know, dreadful um, psychiatric consequences. You know, you've got the sheer embarrassment. You've got, you know, the sense of shame. Of course, all misplaced, but because they're, you know, they're the victims. They're, you know, only young youngsters um, but you can see how they would be shamed and embarrassed by the revelations and find it extremely difficult to live with the consequences yeah absolutely and it also shows that kind of you know the social media companies might not necessarily be keeping up with you know these kind of these kind of acts and how to prevent them well that's right you know it's a big challenge for social media and of course um, there's a lot of finger pointing at social media saying that they should do more and so on and maybe they should, but it's it's a, a case of how do you monitor millions and millions and millions of communications? How do you ascertain whether someone is actually pretending to be something that they're not? Mm. I think it's almost impossible. I think, and, yeah. and I find it impossible myself to keep up with developments in social media. So, you know, the pace of change is so rapid but it's always a, a case, in my opinion, of trying to catch up all the time. Yeah, and I guess the best immediate solution to any of these kind of things is education. Um, education to children who use social media that in no circumstances should you be sending online uh, images of yourself in in those kind of states and not to blame the children or anything like that, but unfortunately in these kind of circumstances where we 
it's really difficult to regulate and prevent these things happening, there needs to be a lot of education out there That's about right. it. And I think people don't understand that, you know, if you're sending personal images, we can put it like that, of yourself to somewhere else or, or, and, or someone is sending you very intimate photographs, images, whatever, of themselves, the dangers. You just don't know where these images might end up. Um, you don't know who might end up seeing them, whether legally or illegally and so on. You know, the whole thing is ripe with difficulty and embarrassing difficulty too. Mm, absolutely. Well, um, I hope you learned a bit about catfishing, Alan. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> and um, I really do recommend that you watch that black and white movie, Kind Hearts and Coronets. Well, there you go. Kind Hearts and Coronets, everybody. And if you have any suggestions for us to you know, speak about any topics you want to hear or any comment you might have on this story or anything like that, please do feel free to get in touch on the email that's listed on our show notes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to this episode of HJ Talks About Abuse. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. If you would like to speak to Alan or I about something you have heard this week, or even if you would like to suggest a topic for a future episode, please do get in touch at aboutabuse at hjtalks.co.uk 